Okay, how to build your engine big without the risk. I got this question in the comments below. I understand the basics of structured running plan, including incorporating at least one speed session and one long run. However, I'm unsure if adding another workout like rowing, biking, skiing would help improve the cardiovascular system or if doing them daily would hinder running progress by overworking the system. Can these additional workouts be done without negatively impacting running gains? And then just underneath, somebody said, I have exactly the same question. Hope it gives you an answer. Now, for me, cycling has always been something that I've just gone to from pretty early on in my running career. My big goal was to run uphill as fast as I could. And so I reached out to somebody that had won the race previously and he said, get on the bike for hundred miles a week. And it's going to boost your engine in terms of, it's gonna build your aerobic capacity. It's gonna build your lungs, your heart, the quality of your blood. You've got all that free work but without the repetitive nature of running on the muscles. And so when I kind of like tapped into that, not only did I see the benefits, I also saw the benefits of the recovery. And I saw the benefits of, I'm actually not that fatigued. And I needed to play with it. And I needed to kind of like experiment a little bit of what was working. And as always, with my personality, I wanted to do too much. So if 100 miles is working, I want to do 300 miles doesn't work like that, unfortunately. It's not input equals output. It's a lot to do with quality. Also, one of the mistakes I made was I was going too fast on the bike. I would go out with the lads. We'd go out sort of racing in Chiang Mai, up, up and down the mountains or in Granada. And I'd be you know, competing against cyclists, going uphill and downhill, crashed a couple of times, which is your only injury risk, really. But I was doing it too hard. So what I was doing is I was riding a bike like a cyclist. The biggest piece of advice I can give you about cycling as cross training before we get onto the other two you mentioned is you want to ride the bike like a runner and you want to sort of constantly keep in mind, what am I trying to do here? What is the goal? The goal is to become the best possible runner I can. What does that actually mean? Because not a lot of people seem to sort of grasp it. Often people will talk about weekly volume, about how many miles you do in a month, etc. What we're trying to do as runners, we're not trying to ride the Tour de France over 21 days. We're trying to be as fast as we possibly can over a certain distance on one morning. That's all we're trying to do. So if you keep that in mind and you think, right, okay, how can I gradually insert cycling, for example, but I want that cycling every single rotation, I want it to be affecting my running body for the positive. So what are the potential failure areas? If you ride in in a too high a gear and you're letting too much of your muscles do the work and you're not, your cadence is not high enough, then all of a sudden you're building cycling muscles that you don't need for running. I did this a lot when I was climbing too much when I first started cycling. I was building quad muscles to literally pull, when you're clipped in, to pull the pedal up and so you're, you're running you're kind of you're engaging the glutes as the pedal is down as the pedal comes up you're engaging the quad in a very sort of strange way that you only really need on the bike you don't need that for running and so what i'd find after doing all this cycling volume and especially going uphill which is where you're really using those muscles then i would get cramps during the marathon at sort of like 30 33 35k when it started to count and that that i pinpointed it down to that and once i stopped doing uh, that kind of cycling in the mountains and just kept it on the flat and high cadence. Then I looked a little step further and I went for a bike setup with somebody who knew runners, knew triathletes and knew cyclists. And he changed my bike setup so that I was using the muscles in the way as close as possible to as I, I would when I was running. The cycling motion when you're on the flat, if you're doing high cadence especially, is very, very similar to when you're going running uphill, which is why I found cycling or sort of like dedicated so much of my focus to it in the first place. What you then realize when you've got that sort of extra 100 miles or it might be sort of five, six, seven hours per week, when you've got that extra volume in the lungs, the heart, the blood, that's something you can tap into. And again, just on recovery, and this you know, is exactly the same for rowing, it's exactly the same for schemo or, uh, or cross-country skiing, your recovery is also enhanced, but that takes discipline in order to say, 
I'm not trying to race you today. <laughs> Guys, you go ahead, enjoy the mountains. I'm going to stay on the flat and I'm going to do my thing. And sometimes your ego gets the best of you because you know that ride is going to be posted to Strava or somewhere on social media. So I wanted to run, I wanted to go faster than 32, 33 kilometers an hour. Once I let my ego drop and just think, you're not a cyclist, it's not even impressive. If you do do 35, 40 kilometers an hour and just went off heart rate, that's your key. So effort and heart rate and increase cadence, keep your cadence at 90 to 100, gradually increase, increase the amount of cycling that you're actually doing and the time to include it, I talked about this recently on a video, so I'll, put the, I'll pin the video below in the comments. The time to include it is definitely not on the day that you're doing an interval session, not on the long run day. Keep those days that you can focus your attention on getting as much of those runs as you possibly can. Put it on the recovery days. So I would put it three days a week, either immediately after recovery or easy run, or, six, or four to six hours later, so a second session during the day. You get some benefit from that as well, but I think bigger sessions for me were more convenient, but also I got, for instance, if you go out and do a 40, 50 minute easy run, and then go on the bike and do an hour and a half, it's almost like a long run. So there's a lot you can tap into there, both mentally and physically and physiologically. Just to mention the other two, now, I spent a couple of years living in Norway and Sweden. Cross-country skiing is perfect, and we know that from people like Killian, who's hammering it in, the, in ski mountaineering, as well as being literally world-class in both ultra-running and ski mountaineering. That's really worked for him, not just as a psychological break at some point during the season, but it's not the same impact on the muscles as when you're running. So it's a really ni nice time to have a, a month off during during the year. And if you're going through the winter and a lot of your training is indoor on a treadmill, if you're in a cold country like Sweden or Norway or Russia, then it's great to get out there in the snow and actually sort of be breathing fresh air, being in the nature. And it's absolutely beautiful being out in the, in, in the snow. And it's so very, very similar. Very, very powerful glutes, hamstrings, quads, moving in a very similar situation, in a very similar biomechanics. Fantastic. For me, rowing, got a guy who's currently rowing quite a lot in addition to his running training. The question is, is quite funny. It's kind of like he's already came from a, vol a volume background within rowing where he's been putting sort of five, six, seven hours a week. So we're gonna keep that because it's affecting his lungs, heart, blood for the positive. It's great, it's fantastic. The question becomes how to use something like rowing, which is great because it's indoor, you can do it. It's not sort of, um, it's weatherproof. And then you can begin to pinch another sort of threshold session or another speed session, essentially. But for me, personally, ex ex exactly the same on the bike with the three sessions. And there's very, very little from the rowing. You've got it in the glutes, you've got it in the hamstrings. But if you can go a pace or an effort level that's low enough so that you're recovering and enhancing enhancing your recovery whilst building the lungs, the heart, the cardiovascular system, you're onto a winner. And for me, with cycling, the run sessions, the key sessions of the interval and the long run, always best to leave them alone and focus on them completely and add the cycling in as a recovery benefit, boosting the overall engine, and also enjoyable, incredibly enjoyable to be out there with the lads if you can stay disciplined enough. I hope that answered your question. If you have any further questions on cross training, on cycling, please let me know in the comments below.